Hi, everyone. Welcome to MSD Public Lecture Series with uh, Paris Toral Architects uh, today. Uh, I begin by acknowledging uh, traditional uh, uh, custodians of the land on which I am, the lands of Wurundjeri people of the Kali nations, and pay my respects to their elders past, present, and those emerging, and to all indigenous and Torres Strait Islanders witnessing uh, this event. I am uh, George Estiano, a senior lecturer in architectural design here at the uh, Faculty of Architecture, Building and Planning. Together with me, Sarah Song uh, is uh, responsible for uh, organizing uh, this event. Uh, I also want to acknowledge that event is made possible in part by a next generation uh, capstone project. Uh, now, my uh, pleasure is to introduce uh, Jose Toral, who, together with Marta Peris, is the founder of Peris Toral Architects uh, based in uh, Barcelona. Their work and interest is in housing, collective spaces, and public spaces. Uh, we know uh, of their work when it came under the spotlight, architectural spotlight, earlier this year when they were shortlisted uh, along with four other. Uh, projects for uh, Miss Van der Rohe uh, Award for their uh, social housing in Cornea. Uh, the project has uh, won many awards. It is celebrated as uh, the largest residential timber structure in uh, Spain, and it comes at the back of a winning uh, competition uh, entry. Peristoral uh, architects are also behind num numerous competition winning entries and working with local municipalities and public uh, providers in Spain on um, uh, uh, on realization of, uh, of those projects. Uh, so I think in short, that will be all for me. So over to you, Jose. Thank you very much for being with us. Well, I, I want to begin the, the lecture with this sentence of the documentary about Foster. That is the question that Fuller made Foster think about what was the weight of his building? Because this is a... Uh, because we are very, this is a thing that we are very interested of uh, the idea of reducing, of using as less as necessary as possible in order to uh, to be more sustainable. For us, the sustainability, the, the key of being sustainable in this year has to do with this idea of using as less as necessary as less as possible. And this idea, this question of Fuller, remain as this importance of not putting more than as necessary. Uh, the first project I will explain is the competition we won uh, more than 10 years ago. And it was no, not built at the moment because of the crisis, but now we are building it. So it's a project that we are very happy that now it's, it's been under construction. Next month, I think we will finish. Uh, we are in Mallorca, in the Balearic Island the middle of the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, and, you know, here, this is a village with, you know, this is the Mares stone, is a, a stone that we have over there that it's a traditional construction. And, you know, the, this, this relation of having vegetation behind the, the stones and the walls. So we, we wanted to, to take this in consideration during the, the when we did the competition and the other thing we're very worried is that in one hand we are on the limits of the town but we are very close to the center of the village so uh, we wanted to work with the idea of fragmentation so we divide the volume in two and we also added two patios and you know these patios will have this character of the Mares stone and you see, this is the, the, the view of the limit. You know, there is the old railway and now it's a path for bikes. So this is the, the limit of the village. And this is well, the, the thing we were talking about, this idea of uh, fragmentation, the, the volume in two pieces and also adding these two patios. Uh, and with this idea of, uh, we're using the partly walls, they are structural walls that uh, allow us to have this cross ventilation relation uh, of all the houses. But the important thing that we, we like to draw he, here is the mid, the intermediate spaces, you know, the void between the volumes. 
and you see we have these two patches and this is like an elevated street that connects everything so these kinds of diagrams are very important for us in the studio so one of the patio it's with vegetation and the other one is with the stone and we like to work with these opposites and also uh, we can see all the the circulations that we like to to um, the, the fact that we never arrive to an end and we every time we can uh go around and have this idea of backless of circulation so you never turn around and doing this in the scale of the building is something that for us is it's important also through the through the basement the, the parking uh, so this is one of the patios with these vegetations and you know the relation with the street. Uh, and this is the, the other one. You can see the the, the parking. Uh, and also the, this is the plan where both the spaces are related. Okay. And this is the elevated street. These are the renderings, and now, oh, months, two or three months ago, under the construction. And the importance of the housing, this idea of a housing that we have this current ventilation through the day zone and putting the rooms on the corners. So we like to, to place rooms at the corners, and so we don't have to, we don't need to, to place corridors. And is the day zone the one that allow us to have this cross ventilation, and we have the the space. This is only one space with many corners. For us, corners are very important uh, that allow us how to inhabit the spaces. And also, this idea of having this relation with the exterior through intermediate spaces, these terraces and this space that that. that that gets this intermediate space that gives this relation from the interior to the outside. This is important in our climate. This is uh, under construction. Here, here we do this clay of line. And the, the importance of the construction that this is, uh, so in this case, the, all the partly walls are structural walls. So we use um, this, uh, this piece, this ceramic piece that it's typical of Balearic Island. It's called H20, so it has 20 holes. They normally place it uh, horizontal, but in this case, we place it vertical. We, it has better resistance for the compression and also allow us to put uh, uh, sand inside. So that this is important for us because uh, in order to solve the sound problems between the neighbors, we need to increase the mass of the of the wall. So we can solve it only with, with one sheet, with one layer. So this is this comes from this idea of reducing. So if we add the the sand in the holes, we are able to solve the, the solution with less amount of material. We, we can solve it only with one layer. So this, this is the idea of reduce, the re reduction the, that we were talking at the beginning. And also, uh, we also we plaster it everything with this line. So the line is important for the regulation of the humidity. We are very close to, we are close to the sea. And the humidity of our the Balearic Island is around 80% in, in most part of the time. So we need to put it down. So we use the lime uh, clay in order to absorb some of this, some part of this humidity. And also uh, while doing the slabs, uh, over the concrete slab that it's lighted with this uh, in, in some parts, we put this uh, rock wool and also the, just for the impact. And then we place the, the pavement with, the, with this concrete that 
uh, allow us to 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 uh, well uh, so uh, only and this uh, to with all the loads to put it in the same level and only with using one layer so uh, we we tried not to to put as less layers as possible okay this is under the construction you see the the partly walls the structural partly walls of ceramic and you know this is the when we do the the slabs the light the lightness of the slabs and here is this this image of the spaces the relation space from the interior to the exterior these intermediate spaces that for us is, are important in our climate to have these these spaces and finally we have this this facade made with the mares stone uh, that uh, we don't we don't we, we place everything with this compression and it has its, it's self-standing and if we don't put uh, the intellect or, uh, and then we cut the, the stone in a way that it has the this compression idea. So we like the not adding many material, more materials as necessary. And this is the final final image of the building. This is a very big building of 42 houses in a small town. So we like this idea of uh, having this building at, uh, has less scale than it was necessary for the build with the volume, with this fragmentation and this idea. The next project I will explain, it's social housing in Ibiza. Uh, we are uh, again in the Balearic Islands and uh, this is the plot. We are very close to the sea, and this is a Plaza Dambosa. It's a it's a zone of Ibiza. There are many hotels and small houses in behind. So we we are in the middle of two two kinds of uh, structures. So we have large buildings and small buildings. So the the project wants to lead. To talk with both with with these two real situations, the large scale and the small scale of the buildings, uh, and also taking consideration of the orientation and the the wind that they are coming from the from the sea. So this is the north facade with the smaller openings, uh, and this idea of the. Uh, fragmentation of the volume, but also the large scale of all of it. So in order to answer to these two situations that we were, uh, we wanted to answer. But we like to begin to explain this project with this image that we don't see the limits of the building. This is important because it's a project that has begun from the, from, from the inside to the outside. So we, we begin with these modules of three by four meters, uh, uh, 12 square meters. Uh, they, we use also the same model for the living room, the dining and kitchen, and all the rooms measure the same, the stair. This is the public areas of the housing, the patios. And we also have these half models of two by three. So we, we like to uh, add these models in order to get the fragmentation of all the buildings. So uh, this idea of fragmentation allow us to have this vertex and every time we have a corner, we, the, the wind when it comes generates some vertex and uh, increases the velocity of the air. Uh, so we have this, uh, these three uh, cores of the stairs that we have the stair, the lift. This is the common, the common room, the access room, and the patios, and all the houses. They are all are south orientated. So all of them they have this orientation of south. And when we go up, we are losing some of the houses and changing the combinations of these. Uh, these rooms. 
all of them has this cross ventilation or sometimes through the patio and sometimes because they have this double orientation. And this is the, one of the main roles. So we have uh, all of them that have the south orientation and here we have these terraces that they, they capture the, the sun. So the, the building is important that it's gonna try not to have a mechanical systems or heating. And you see, this is a, a view of the of the interior space. This is the ones that has the cross ventilation through the through the patio, and we can see here all the materials. They are very raw. So uh, with the walls are the, the structural walls, and in this case we are using rammed earth blocks. Uh, and again, we, we, we leave exposed the, the, the slab, the, the concrete slab, and also the, the floor, the floating floor of concrete. Another image of another kind of, of house. This is the, these are the ones of double orientation houses. This is the capture. The, and we see this is the view from the south. The, so uh, here we have bigger openings in order that they capture more of the sun in, this, in the winter. And also all of them, they have these opportunities, this capability of have these solar protections to protect of the sun in the summer. And you see here, you see this section where uh, we have this uh, structural, walls uh, made of this uh, rammed earth, uh, each three meters. And you know, the enterprise that was the, 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 the make these kinds of blocks, they used to make them one meter wide. So very, very, they, they were very heavy and they, 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 they never used it to do social housing. So we, we propose them to change the, the scale of the block to make a, very, a smaller block that you can handle it with one hand, so make it cheaper. Uh, because what we were interested was more of the capability of the rummet earth of regulating the humidity rather than the aesthetic uh, view of the material. So here you see you now with this, when we were placing, all, all the, all the blocks uh, with the hands, you know, and this idea of a kind of a labyrinth that you can see uh, all everything, all the partly walls of the uh, yeah. are made with these uh, rameter blocks. So here, under the construction, you know, you enter like in a cave. It's very interesting because it's very hot there in. In Ibiza, and when you enter here, it's very fresh. It's, and also to solve the acoustic problems we get between neighbors, here we cannot plaster. So, what we did is some small plaster with this uh, pulido, the, the polish, so uh, that it, we, we can close all the small holes that can. Um, mm, uh, have this relation of the sound. So this is the space before polishing, and this is just after the polishing. You know, we see this is one of the houses of the, this uh, cross ventilation relation. This is under the construction now. So again, we go back to the construction. So we have these uh, structural walls. They are thicker. Uh, in the partly walls and smaller, uh, this this one are for the stability of the transversal uh, loads. And again, it's a very similar situation. Uh, in this case, the, the, there is an important thing is that even though we are using uh, concrete, uh, we la we try to to use as less concrete as possible. So. Uh, we have these precast beams that are 10 by 20, each 80 centimeters. 
and we have this compression layer of five centimeters that makes this is the equivalent of a 10 centimeters thickness of, of the slab. So that makes that it's less than the half of the usual concrete that you need in these kinds of structure. And again, we, we use directly the concrete as the, the final pavement. You know, here we see the construction of the slab, this precast, and the, this idea of when we pour the on-site concrete that everything uh, works in as a one piece. So we use as many uh, prefabricated pieces, separated pieces, and when we uh, when we pour the concrete, everything is is static. So here we see the the all the pieces together in this lab. Uh, so uh, we 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 do these ethics, this external isolation with uh, cork, a uh, cork that is coming from Portugal, very close here in Spain. Uh, it's a very sustainable material and also plastered with lime. And for doing the, the uh, coverings, the, uh, we see they do the, the isolation we do in the, uh, the scooters and the, the roofs. Uh, we, we make it with Posidonia. It's a kind of isolation we have in it comes from the from the sea the, the sea food, the, the sea and the, they dry, we dry them and we use them as isolation. So in this case, uh, we do the all the the evacuation of the water with the wood, and finally we put this APDM membrane, so uh, it's very sustainable. So the, the important thing here is that we, we try to choose the materials in order that the emissions of CO2 are very low. So the normal building, we have around 1,000 kilos CO2 by square meter, and in this case, we have 420. Uh, it's less than the 60 percent. So uh, mm -hmm. with, with the raw mat earth, with the light concrete, with the cork, you know, the shelters made of wood, no, the, everything is made with the wood. So that help us to uh, put low this CO2 of the constructions, the kilos of CO2 of construction. And also uh, for the, when we talk about uh, the life of the, the use of the building, we, we try to put down the, the emissions also of the using. So we, we, we work with this idea of placing these actions uh, uh, and you know, I see now we explain that how they will work. This is the the timber structure of the of the atriums, and you know, this is the how the building will work in winter. So uh, in winter, the shape of the building is more close. So uh, we. Uh, you know, we have this atrio that captures the sun during the day, and also it's one of the houses they they close the terraces with this this uh, this place the, the these captures the, the this is like um, how do you say the building uh, glass? No, we will close with glass. And they, they have this capture. So uh, in summer, in winter, we, the, the shape of the building is very compact. And also, we can capture some of the sun. So it's getting heater. And as we put the, the cork around the building, we don't have, the, it's very well isolated. And also, the materials we use, they have a lot of inertia. That means that all this heat that we, the, the capture we have, they will want to keep it inside longer a long time. So this is a simulation of the atrium, you know, when you it's getting hot, you know, in the exterior, we have around 15 uh, 
degrees and you know we can go up to 23 degrees the problem here is that uh, the heat is it's very it's hotter in the top and it's the we have an acidification of the air so that's why we place this fan uh, in the middle of the atrial in order that we can pull it down put down you know the the, the, the temperature so we have around this 20 degrees uh, media uh, over all the atrial, so it's around five more degrees than outside, than the temperature outside. And the interesting thing is that we, we analyze one week, we can see this is the outside temperature that it comes from uh, nine degrees at night, 16 degrees at during the day, going back to seven, you know, it's going, it's going up and down. But uh, the interesting thing is that this is the interior temperature without any uh, any system uh, active system. So we have a constant temperature of twenty one degrees. You know the interesting thing is that uh, this line is very flat because of the inertia. So uh, using these heavy materials help us to make very flat a very flat line. And having this temperature that uh, show us that we don't need any active system in the in the building, and this the, the hardest part the harder part was is to do the same in summer because here in summer in Ibiza is very hot. So you, we change the the way it works. So in this case, the we open all the the atrium and we open maybe all of the terraces. So we increase the surface of interchange of the building. So the, the shape of the building has more uh, interchanging layers. Uh, we also have this movement of the air, you know, all the cross ventilation of each one of the, of the houses. And uh, this inner city, the, 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 the same, Inner sea that helped us in the winter will help us in summer because uh, it can cool down at night and and we change and absorb the the, uh, the the excess of heating in in summer uh, and finally using this ramet earth that has the ability of regulating humidity. Uh, we can absorb a lot of the humidity of the air. You know, normally in uh, the humidity of the air has to be around 40 or uh, 70%. And here we are up to 90, 80 or 90%. So we can cool it down around 50% with these Ramet earth blocks. And we analyze the same graphical. So the, the blue ones are the exterior temperature. So we're going down to 23 at degrees at night and 30 degrees during the day. And the, the, the thing is that we can make it more flat, but it's not as flat as before. So we are around 26 degrees, 27 degrees line in the in, in the interior. So uh, it's more flattened, but it's not enough to have this idea of comfort. So to get this comfort, we, we, we work with the movement of the air. We cannot change the temperature, of, uh, but we can change the, the feeling of comfort. So uh, the atrium changed its works, and now it works like a chimney, a uh, heating chimney. Uh, that, so we make these openings and generates this movement of the air. So we have around 2.1 meters by second of movement of the air in the atrium, even though on the outside there is no movement of the air because of it's getting heater on this part. Uh, so it's half meter by second, it's around one degree of sensation. So it's around four less degrees of sensation of temperature. Uh, so here we can analyze the comfort. This is a simulation, and this is the so 
even though outside we have a very high temperature around 29 degrees, uh, when we increase the movement of the air with the fans, with the with the with the solar chimney uh, up to 1.5 meters per second, when we change humidity because of the blocks, and also when we put the proper clothing, we are able to move the comfort to an area of this 29 degrees. So this is the, the nice thing is that uh, changing the conditions of comfort, we are able to have this, uh, this well standing, even though the temperature is high. So you see with the, the normal temperature, we, we can find it's around 26 degrees. So uh, this is how we manage not to put uh, active systems in the project. Uh, the next project I will explain. Yeah, there's these housings in in Barcelona. Uh, we are. In, this is the call the Carre Venezuela. Uh, so we are around this plot. This is diagonal. Uh, this is uh, Perequar. So uh, we we are play. We are here, and we are in a north situation north to south block. Uh, so we decided to put all the, the uh, to place to occupy all the plot and empty inside with some patios. So we, we place five of these patios. Uh, so the, the, the thing we won the competition because of uh, we, we had some several programs we have senior housing, so we have uh, social housing, this housing for refugees and also a parking. So uh, we were the only ones that um, instead of making uh, each program has a, its own building, we place one over the other. We make this idea of a certification of the, of the program. So we place the senior housing that only have one room in the top. So uh, the social housing has two rooms. So the one, the, the extra room, we took it off. So we make bigger the patio, the atrium. And, you know, this housing for, the, so for refugees are only allowed to here to have them in the ground floor. And finally, we place the parking with this natural ventilation uh, So it's one of the programs, they have their own entrances. So they, they can, they don't, they, they are very independent one from the other. So this is social housing, senior housings. You know, they, they, they chair one evacuation stair. And you see, we, but they have, they, they have this relation between, they can see one to another. So um, we, we place this elevated street that it's going through the atriums. So this is the, these are the housings. They are a very strategy similar of the houses that we show in Son Cervera. So, um, you know, we place the rooms in the corners and, uh, and the day zone uh making the, you know this diagonalization the, the, this opportunity of having more corners uh we play, we place together the kitchen with the dining room the living room you know are very equivalent spaces we, again this these terraces to make the relation with the exterior and the same situation when we go up to the senior housings they lose this second room so that one makes the patio gets bigger. So this is a social housing plan. You know, this is the, the core of the senior housing that it goes up through the other programs. And these are the senior housings where the core of the social housing disappears and we can have some shared spaces in what each plan, you know? So this is the, the refugees and the parking. And up to the top, we have this atrium that um, where we have these uh, common spaces for the senior housings, these 
uh, through the plantations. And, you know, this is like a very big atrium that also has these solar protections for the summer to convert it in a solar chimney. These are the final renders before the construction. And now we are at this point in the, under the, the construction of the building. This is the, the, the final section, you know, this idea of even though this part of the building is facing north, uh, through the patio, you know, the solar, the senior housings are always facing to south. And again, you know, uh, we, we are very, this, the strategy is very similar to the one of Ibiza. So we, in summer, in winter, we close the atrium and this is, this made some capture and, you know, using uh, the concrete structure with the inertia to maintain all the heating. And in summer, you know, using the fans, the movement of the air, everything open. So it's a very similar situation. The only change between Ibiza is that in this case, all the renovation of the air of the, of the houses are made through this intermediate space. So, uh, you know, this is the demand of the, that we can find uh, if we interchange with the exterior. So we have sent 7.7 .7, uh, kilowatts per square meter. We can go down to 74% to point to, uh, to a demand of two when we do the renovation of the air in the inside. And again, another thing we were very worried is the, the sound. Uh, so the, rever the reverberation of the patios as we wanted that everyone opens the, win the windows to, to have this closed ventilation. So the sound doesn't annoy one neighbor to the other. So if we place, if we lift only the concrete, we have five seconds of reverberation. So finally, we find out mm -hmm. that we have some render it that was able to put down to less than one second of reverberation. So we, these are things that we are very worried. So uh, this idea of having uh, the simulation also of the comfort. This is the, the view of the render it that absorbs the the reverberation of the space. And finally, the facade, this idea of a stratification, you see, you can see different the social housing than the senior housings. And, you know, this is the, the construction of, of the building. This is, here we can see the parking, you know, the parking with this natural cross ventilation, so we don't need any active system. And we finally we decided to build all the all the project with this pre prefabricated structure of concrete, but in not in the usual way. This is a way we use it that we wanted to generate more geometry. So we normally we like to use prefabrication to give some geometry. Uh, so we need less amount of material. So uh, here. Uh, we, we are the equivalent of 15 centimeter uh, concrete slab. So it's the half of the standard structure. Um, and everything, you know, again, it's a very similar strategy in the one of Ibiza. When we put, you know, we have some pre the structure, the pillars and the, and the, the slabs, but also we pour uh, on-site concrete that put links everything together and the behavior, the structural behavior, it's uh, hyperstatic uh, rather than isostatic. So that um, I, I helps us to use less amount of material. So this is the space under the construction. And finally, we see the, this facade when, we, when, you know, we can see that all the, all the elements of the facade are structural elements. So again, this idea of uh, using as less as possible that every, everything we put has more than one use. So the next project of Spain is Cornellà. Uh, you know, to understand where we 
place Cornellà, it's mm, around Barcelona. This is the this is Barcelona center, the old city, and this is like the the highway that goes around Barcelona and Cornellà is around here. So actually, we we belong to Barcelona, no? even though Cornellà is an has its own village. So we are in this area of Cornellà between you know a change of uh, uh, you know, we have these blocks and we have this, uh, the the uh, you know, uh, so this is a piece where we used, there used to be a cinema and they, they, they make this competition to put housings in, in this block. And you know the re the planning regulations were very strict, so we we had this plot of fifty by forty, and we had to place a patio of twenty five by fifteen. So um, the first thing we did it was not to not to as we couldn't decide the volume of the of the building, we decided that we will change the, the way we want to think of the houses. So instead of adding houses, we wanted to add rooms. So we, we thought of what would happen if all the rooms of the buildings had the same measure and they were all equal. Because when everything is equal, there are things that are happening. Uh, for instance, uh, there is no hierarchy in the house because all the rooms will measure the same. So there is not bigger room for the parents than from, for the sons. So, uh, so that, that changed the way the, the, the hierarchy of the family. And also uh, we can find that as everything measures the same, we can interchange. So we can choose where we want to live. So, uh, the, the the big point was to decide which has to be the the size of this room because in here in Spain the rooms for for uh, the measurements of the rooms are around six eight or ten square meters but this was this was not enough for the dining or living rooms so uh, we, 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 we we begin with this uh, reference of the eight tatami rooms from the Japanese uh, culture. You know, Marta, my partner, has a PhD about the uh, Japanese house. And we, we have worked a lot about these kinds of examples. So the nice thing of this tatami, eight tatami room is that measures 360 by 360, around 13 square meters. And uh, the nice thing is that in Japan, they don't call the, the, the rooms by their use because they reprogram the use and they, they change. The, the, during the day, this is the living, but during night, it can be a room, uh, a bedroom. So uh, they, they, they call it by the size. So it's, it's tatami is the size of one person, light in the floor. So, an eight tatami room, it's a room for eight persons. So we took this idea of 360 by 360, and this is the matrix of rooms that we placed in our plot. And finally, after that, we found that, that a Gretel Isoski kitchen of Frankfurt was measuring one of the versions 360 by 360. Uh, and La Petite Cavanon of Le Corbusier was measuring 366 by 366. So this is the nice thing that we found out that, you know, the more flexible room, the tatami rooms, the more specialized room, the kitchen of Frankfurt and the room of thinking of Le Corbusier, all of them could fit inside our matrix. So at this point, we had these 543 spaces uh, in all the building. And this is the point where we, we didn't know uh, how were going to be the houses. We knew that maybe in the middle we can place more kitchens and bathrooms because they don't have this direct light. And this is, at this moment, we begin to place the four cores. And this is the moment where we start 
space placing the the housings no so we have around five houses by plan in this curve and four in this so 18 houses in each one of the, the spaces so we have this scheme of a structure of timber structure uh, that has the, this relation of 360 we thought the timber structure would be a good uh, strategy Uh, in the ground floor, we use concrete until the ceiling of the ground floor. And the important thing here is that we, we decided to make a porch and also enter into all the houses through this patio. So uh, instead of entering directly to each one of the cores directly from the street, we decided to increase these intermediate spaces between the house and the street. So here we see the, this relation, this intermediate space, the porch, and also this has some thermal behaviors because here when we make the ports we have the you know south comes from here so we have this shadow place uh, during all the day here and we are receiving sun over here so every day you know the cold air of the shadow goes up to the uh, the hot air and generates you know this movement up here that is constantly generates this microclima and the air when it moves is passed through the vegetation of the patio and the vegetation is able to keep some of the humidity of the air. So in the ground in the basement we have this space that I was to uh, was think to to put the, a cinema facility with no supports you know very uh, with the width of the patio. And here we, we can we enter the patio, we see this transparency, you know, you, everything is very transparent, so the air can enter to the to the porch. And in the, at this point we can enter to one of the one of the cores. No? So here we, we see the stairs. We have these two walls, the wall of the concrete in the basement, uh, in the ground floor, and also uh, the wood that is coming from the upper floors. So the stair is the point where everything will we, we, the two walls are came, coming together and they relate, you know, this idea of using texture to relate different materials. When we go up, you know, all the stair is made with this timber. Uh, this is the, the, the same image. The important thing is that we don't have a corridor, that we are, have the small corridors and some of the houses when we enter to them through the terrace. So uh, you, you see uh, here you have the stair and this is the, the common room where the lift led you. And some of the houses we enter through the terrace and the other ones we enter directly. And all the rooms are equal and also the stair fits in one of these rooms. And you see this is the, the, the entrances. And the nice thing of the plan, this is a plan that is very naughty because we cannot, it's very difficult to understand which, which are the limits between the, the different rooms, uh, the different houses and the houses from the common areas. So for us, this indetermination is key. It's a key point to the plan. And also you see, we only have these corners that of corridor, it's not a, so you see here the aggregation, you now have the stair and the common area and only this space. So these two houses, we enter through them directly through the terrace. You know? And these other three houses, we enter directly from the core. So this is the typical situation. You know, each room, each house has around six models. Three of them are rooms. And the dining, the living room, and the dining and kitchen area, and also the bathroom area. You know, but the nice thing is that the relation between these spaces it's wide enough that this, you have the feeling of uh, that the space is only one. You know, this is the the view from one of the terraces, and this is the this idea of how, of having wide openings that. Yeah, even though you you are in a 30 square meter space, 
you see uh, constantly another space, so your feeling of the space is bigger than it measures. And also, we, we like to put these walls in order that you cannot see everything at the one point of view. So there are some parts that you don't see that you can imagine the space measures more than you feel. You know? And also the importance of the corners to help inhabiting or this idea of from one space, you can see four more other spaces. So your, your sensation is not, the, this is 13 square meters, it's more uh, bigger space. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This idea of the, the closings to the patio with these filters that give you privacy, but also allow the air to, to go through. When we, we go up in the stair, we can get to the this common area in the the rooftop, uh, and uh, when we talk about the construction of the timber, we have this problem of uh, protecting the timber for the fire resistance. So we we used two strategies. One strategy was to uh, increase the thickness of the wood. So each centimeters extra, it's 30 minutes of resistance. So we needed 90 minutes of resistance in this building. So uh, to leave the slabs exposed with the wood exposed, uh, we, we had to increase three centimeters extra the thickness of the of the slab. But also um, in the in the facade, what we did we had these CLT panels and we protected with these plaster boards. Each plaster board is around 30 minutes. So we have two plaster boards and one centimeter extra in the CLT. And, you know, this situation, that's what, that was important because our first concept of a structure that we had in the competition that all the walls were gonna be structural. Uh, if each one of the walls will have to increase the thickness in three centimeters by each one of the sides, it couldn't work economically. And it was like adding too much material. And that's why in some moment we decided to change. And in the inside of the building, we only have pillars and beams uh, uh, of timber. Uh, we, we don't have this CLT process that we thought that was the best structure at the beginning of the competition. So, to we're talking about uh, to do the the structure, uh, uh, we work with the with the, with the structure. So we we analyze uh, what's the deformation of a three sixter room. So we have a, if, if only we have two supports, we have six centimeter six millimeters of deformation. If we make the con the continuous slab and we place you know the three rooms with the same slab we can compensate moments so the deformation goes down to the half three millimeters and when we add the cantilevers uh, that means that in the middle we have only one millimeter of deformation and that means only that at the beginning we needed uh, 15 centimeters of a slab of concrete slab uh, when we do all the compensation of the moments, we can get this down to 12 centimeters. So we built it with these 15 centimeters and we had the three centimeters extra we needed for the fire resistance. So here you see this idea of compensation, you know, this new structure, you know, with pillars and beams of blue lamb in the middle, you know, CLT uh, in the slab and in the facades. And this idea of compensating the moments, you know, of using the, the same lab, the same with the with the cantilevers, and in this idea of uh, using pillars and, and beams of blue lamp, this idea of compensating also moments that the, if we do the joints between the beams in the supports, we wouldn't compensate moments. So the objective was to put the joint in one fifth of the distance between supports. That is this point, you know where you see uh, there is the moment zero. So even though we cannot make this joint, uh, the joint has always has to be articulated when we build with wood, we can compensate moments because in that point, moment is zero. 
So we decided we designed a, a piece, uh, this metal piece that allow the beam to pass through and also the, the pillar to go through. And that, that allow us to make this join at the moment zero point. So for us, this is the, like the, the, clue, the clue of the construction of the building. Uh, you know, this piece that allows the beam to pass and the pillar to go through. And this join at one fifth, you know, you can see the diagram. Here's the zero moment uh, point. So this is the final structural plan, you know, with the slabs of CLT, the facades with CLT, but the middle part with the glue lamp beams and pillars. And the, the interesting thing is that at the structure of the competitions, we needed around uh, 15 cube meters by square meters. And the final one we built it, it's 0 0.24, it's length, less than the half. So the nice thing is that even though building with wood, it's sustainable, building with half of the wood is more sustainable. So this is the point of the idea of reducing I was introducing at the beginning. This is the construction, this relation of the ventilations. And to do the facade, uh, we, we like to we, we, we work with this idea of many layers, you know, so uh, to generate this intermediate space. So all the solar protection is in the outside. So that means that we have some fixed spaces, you know, that may a textile ones and uh, mobile ones in front of the on, of the windows, the shelters, this wood shelter. We also let the wood exp expose it in the ceiling because the wood also has this ability of uh, absorbing some part of the humidity of the air and everything is very white in order not to keep heating and we have this ventilated facade. So this space finally has two or three less degrees than the outside. So this idea of relating to the outside with intermediate spaces that change the conditions. And to, there are many fence, many uh, railways in the uh, rail hands in, in, the, in the building. And we wanted to industrialize the production, the production of, of these rail hands. Uh, uh, what we did is to use these uh, electrosolidated uh, electro welded uh, mesh and uh, giving the rigidity with this idea of folding. So when we fold, we are able to give some rigidity. This is uh, something that Jean Prouvé used to do a lot with their, his furniture and that help us not to use that, uh, to make more cheaper. So we, we don't have to do any welding in, in the, in the hand trade. So, uh, so it makes like three times cheaper uh, because this is social housing. We have a very low, bu low budget. So this is one of the strategies of uh, industrializing, going faster, making it cheaper and reducing the contamination of each time of the future. And the next project I will explain are some houses in Bon Pastor, uh, in Barcelona. Uh, we are uh, close to the river, the Vesos River, and you know the sea. We have it in the down here. So the nice thing of the river is that it's a it's a tunnel of wind. So uh, all the wind from the sea comes through here. So. Uh, this, is, this is very important that has conditioned all the project. Uh, another, the other thing is that the, it's, uh, these houses are for people that are used to live here down uh, touching to the street. And we, uh, but now they have to go in the building. So we wanted to increase a lot the intermediate spaces to generate some situations that they, 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 they were used to have. 
So uh, in one hand, we had this, um, this building of 18 meters and with all the, the rooms in one facade, this, this was very worried. We were worried because uh, that means that we had to, we need to put around 150 windows in this facade. So uh, for us, this was a problem and we decided to place these terraces. So each terrace uh, incorporates three of the three of the windows. So we, we changed uh, 150 facade with uh, only a 50 with a services facade that that changes the scale of the facade and makes the window openings more in relation of the witness of the building. So uh, this is the the entrances. So we have, you know, the building. It's 15 meters 20 in the ground floor. So we have this intermediate space that generate these patios for the ground floor houses and this space that we can put the ramp and generate some intimidity of the ground floor houses. This is, these are the, the houses of the, of the ground floor that they, they look at this five meters space patio. Also here we have this, this thickness that allow us to do the natural ventilation of the parking. And we'll go up. We have this stair that has this all um, the all all these openings that you know we, we can we see the uh, we can the, the air can pass no so everything is very ventilated it's more into more exterior. So this is the, the importance of uh, the plan that the wind in the plan, you know, we have this facade full of rooms and uh, we, 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 we made a facade of uh, rooms with, 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 with lettuces. No, we know all, all the facade is made with lettuce the, the stairs, all the terraces. So that allows that all the, the movement of the air of the, that goes through the tunnel wind of the, of the river, that uh, the, the houses, they, 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 they take uh, advantage of this. So we, we place these central courts and we know we, we are able to uh, have Main circulations around the house, you know? and the, the, there is a nice thing that the a decision of not uh, of this is not the standard way of placing the stair because the standard way was using less facade, but doing it this way that allows us to put the second bathroom behind the lift, and this allows us to empty this space so have this deepness of the of the house that uh, allow us you know to have this continuity from one side to another so this is these images are showing this deepness of the house and this relation with the lettuce and again the construction here you know the easier way to build with the uh, the brick facade, it's uh, placing the brick over the slab, but in this case, we have this thermal, to break the thermal heating, uh, uh, we, we, we make a prefabrication of this piece with this isolation, and we place the, the brick uh, over this prefabricated space. And the nice thing is that normally, the windows are uh, the the facade uh, holds the windows, but in this case, are the windows the ones that are holding the facade? So we made the, this structural. You know, we we have these armors that are the ones that give uh, a standing for the facade. These are the prefabricated of the slabs that they are connected at the moment when we pour the, the on-site concrete. And you know we place the first thing we place all the windows, and then we 
make the closing of the brick wall. And you know, the, the brick wall is has the, the same measurement of the lattice and you know the same structure, the, the same thing with when we do this the, the lattice, you know, these elements that holds the solar protection, they, they are self-standing to do the balconies, you know, they are structural elements that uh, they hold also the, the facade. You know, this element will finish. These lattices, you know, that are holded from the different uh, elements. This is the the corner, the construction showing the the construction of the corner, and in the in the top roof, we we place the with another, again, uh, prefabricated uh, element to show some light uh, behind the, the lattice. And, you know, we are up here, we're gonna move, you know, down here, we will go up to the parking, you know, the parking with this idea of, you know, we see we have this deepness, you know, these are the, ground floor terraces, and we have uh, this cross ventilation to the parts so of we don't need any mechanical systems. These are the relation. And in the roof tube, we know we don't, we change the stair, we take the stair as a patio. So anything is going up and that makes uh, this, uh, the situation of having these views. Uh, and the last project I'm going to talk is this project in Borrasal, very close to uh, Don Pastor. And you know, this is a project where we always we were adopting. If it was a tower, it's a tower. That it's a block that becomes a tower. But we wanted to know if it's more a tower or more a block. We we use the same systems as the ones that we use in Bon Pastor with the same prefabricated on the slabs. And also in this case, this is a hand brick. But again, use it, uh, using you know this idea of lattices. And we finally decided that this was more of a tower than a block. So our typology has to do with this vastical situation with all the cross ventilation on the corners. And uh, so here the, the, we have, when we go to the block plan, we have these three uh, rooms, the, these three dwellings that are the same. And we have these two ones that adapt to conform this intermediate space that is very important for us. So this is the, 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 the rooms, the facade that we can change the, the situation of the rooms and we can allow how we're gonna manage the facade. But the important thing is this intermediate space that connects, you know, the tower to the block. And this space, you know, it's very similar of the ones of Venezuela or Ibiza, no? that it's an atrium and, you know, and air enters from the south, from the north. And, you know, you, you can have this, shape different shapes in winter than summer and these are again you know the simulations you know we, we have more light in this the, this is the facade that receives more amount the the the, cob, the the roof is the facade that receives more amount of light of heating so this is the space that um uh the, this we, we have these corridors and this is the atrium you know from different point of view and with this materiality of the brick that give us some inertia to make this uh bioclimatic space more to handle more to the the, the heating during all the day so this is the final image we also see the, this rooftop uh, showing us the views of the city and I, I like to finish with this sentence of Eduardo Chiguida that it's inspired, I'll try to translate it, always never different, but never always the same.
So this is like one of the points that for us are very important to make some variation of the same things, but never stay in the same place. Thank, thank you, Jose. Jose, that was that was amazing, really amazing lecture. Really, congratulations for for your work and and for for the lecture as well. Uh, it was a lot more than we could have hoped from a from a single lecture. There are some questions that have uh, came in through question and answer uh, chat. I don't know if you can see them. Um, uh, I try. Would you like to get a drink of water first before you start answering those, or you want to look at them now, or? Do you want me to read them for you? What What's easier? Yeah, I prefer you to read them. Yeah. You, okay. You okay, I'll give it a try. You know, I'm not really good at this, but I'll do my best. So the first question is from um, uh, Hella. Uh, she's saying, uh, she's giving you compliments for your work, uh, stunning material palette. So when she's saying, while well, you spoke about the more factual aspects of your material choices, could you speak a bit more about consideration in regard to residents' well-being, durability, and beauty? So yeah I'll, I'll let you make the interpretation of it okay more about the residents well-being durability and beauty. We, we we are very well uh you know the well-being it's the comfort no so uh, for us this is the, the key point and also the durability we also we always we, we like a lot these materials that has a lot of durability you know uh, uh I don't. I I just I don't know what to add to the what what she's expecting more to, uh, but the, the, their consideration for us are very important, you know. Mm -hmm. But in in this case, I just wanted to focus more the lecture with this idea of when you choose the material, let's try to reduce or uh, use as less layers as less amount of decisions, you know this austerity of the construction that for us is very important, you know, because that help us that it's more economically uh, viable. And also we think it's better for the sustainability. And, you know, to talking about, you know, the, we, the there is a thing that we always generate some uh, climate spaces like the atriums, like the patios, but all of them, we never do it. We always do them related to the common areas of the building. So these are social spacing. So this idea of the ambiental spaces, they, we join them also with the social spaces that generates this idea of community uh, in the building. So I don't know if it's this answers a bit. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, that sounds it sounds about right. I just maybe can um, probe further into this. So these are all mainly social housing projects that that, that you have uh, shown us. So does that mean that residents are there uh, temporarily or in the longer term basis? So is this more like a rental housing or it's a somebody's permanent home? Um, normally, they are uh, they, they they don't uh, they don't sell them. They are for rent. Mm -hmm. So, but it's but they, they stay a lot of time. They, it's not temporary because they, they can you know the the ones of the senior uh, the senior housings are finalists. So mm -hmm. they, they, when they enter, they they stay there. Yeah. yeah. In the order of presentations, this is the very first thing I wanted to ask. Uh, was it chronological, or if you've lined up project, it's projects in a in a certain in a certain way for us? Today. It's not chronological. Okay. No, it, it's a bit more, you know, the if I the chronology is some surveyor, the first one, and then you see the the two last ones, Bon Pastor and Borrasa are the next, and then it comes uh Cornella, Ibiza, and Venezuela. Okay. Thanks. There's next question again about durability from Manikiam, and but I think you've answered this to to a certain extent. So uh, they're wondering uh, how durable are uh, timber constructions uh, in general. Well, uh, the, we know we 
we, we have to answer to the same, it's the same durability as the ones of concrete. We know the fire, we have to answer to the same things. The, you know, the, the, there are things that we, we never let the timber expose where they can rain. So, you know, all the details are made in order that uh, the protection of the of, of, of this, but uh, we, we are not very worried about the durability because you never, you know, the sun never, you know, neither the rain or the sun are fighting directly to the timber, so. Yeah, you showed a couple of snapshots of um, thermal and ventilation uh, performance modeling uh, as part mm -hmm. of uh, your presentation. Guillermo is asking, when uh, are these being made and are they predictive or they come uh, as sort of post-rationalization of an architectural idea? And how do you work with uh, consultants that provide uh, uh, this knowledge? Yeah, this is a very important part of our work because we, every time they enter before, you know, the consultants, now they, they now in each competition, we just like, are try to do these kinds of diagrams because uh, when you want to do the challenge of not using uh, active systems, you have to do these kinds of modelings. And you know, we begin with some intuitions. You know, we begin thinking this will work, and but then they do the simulations, and then we realize the reality, and then we adapt, and we they told us the the things that can improve. You know, so. We begin like we think this will work, but then uh, we, we have to improve it. You know, there, there is this diagram, they always tell us where are we losing the energy. So we have to, so there is a moment that we cannot, it's not necessary to put more money in doing more insulation because the problem are infiltration. So uh, the, as we work with all the projects I've shown, they are social housings. They come from competitions, so they they have low budget. So as we have this limited budget, that means that we have to understand uh, until that one, which is the point where we don't need to put more. So this is important with the consultant because they they give us these diagrams and they show us in each moment uh, where are we losing the energy. Okay, this is a really boring question for me. So when it comes to building regulations, so does that slow down the process of construction and design to a certain extent? Do you have to go through certification of the construction methods that you want to use sometimes? And how, how does that work? Because we're seeing conventional building materials, but used in a very innovative way, in a sense, you know, you're, you're turning the brick the other way around and, you know, so I'm just curious, is, is that causing a delay in terms of uh, how projects are delivered? Well, uh, sometimes we have some moments that we have to argue things, uh, but it's not a lot, you know. Uh, we are very used to this, and so we know how to explain them and that things are happening, and, you know, it's not a problem, you know, Good. but it's not easy. Okay, I'll take it. I'll take your word for it. Uh, Lucas is asking about patios. These are what we call atriums uh, over here. So he wanted to know if this is something that is traditional or typical for uh, Spanish architecture, because we see a lot of student work referencing those in. Uh, but you know, just uh, you know, pretty much all of your projects have a uh, word patio uh, in them. Yeah, yeah, no, the patio is a very typical traditional. Mm -hmm. But here in Spain, we are not used to cover it. Uh, so the Atrium, it's like the new version that now we are trying to, in order to not have any uh, uh, active system. So this is not typical here, but I think our climate is good enough that only with this covering it, that we cannot need any heating from this. Okay. Uh, there's a whole series of questions from 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 Mitch. So let's uh, go through those uh, slowly. Uh, so uh, he says, uh, does the uh, regarding the project in Ibiza, does the modularity also relate to some restrictions in the available constructional structural methodology 
of the rammed earth? Uh, well, a bit, because yes. normally when the first time we talked with the enterprise, they mm -hmm. told us that they cannot more do more than three stages and we needed to do five. So that's why, uh, you know, when instead of using five meters between supports, when you only use three meters, you can go up. You know, the, so the, 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 there is this, everything comes, and you know, when we use this concrete that is very light because it's like a 10 centimeter slab, that helps also to go up, you know? So, uh, you know, not, normally this is a material that it's when you can use it with ground floor plus two, and, you know, we get up. So it has to do a lot. <coughs> so, and the next one, do you find low embodied energy materials like the ram earth are more expensive or labor intensive than standard construction? Is this balanced by leaving the materials raw to expose their natural beauty and save labor within finishing? Well, they are more expensive now, mm -hmm. but that's because we don't pay the real price. You know, if we pay the the contamination of the materials, which the, the prices will turn upside down, you know? Mm -hmm. So uh, we just, for us, it's important to show that it's possible, you know, because we, we want to, we, we think that we have to find a way of building more sustainably. So it's, so uh, in this idea of producing, so if we let them expose, we have, we, we kept more the humidity and we, we have some, so for us aesthetics, it's more a consequence. It's not a, a thing that we put at, at the beginning. So, okay. Uh, so next question is regarding Barcelona project. I suppose that's not Cornea, but the one before uh, Cornea that, that you showed. Uh, can you expand on the design of the porch or interface to the external circulation? And how do you preserve privacy and refuge for the occupants while allowing that interface to open and achieve cross ventilation? Yeah, that's, uh, you know, we, we always put the, we are very worried about the intimacy. So, you know, in many projects, we could, you know, in the case of Venezuela, the one of the, the, the five arches. We had these enterings through these gates of wood, the lattices of wood, and also it's one of the windows has the, the we, we normally use the solar protection to give intimidity. So in the case of Cornelia, we have uh, these um, perforated sheets that allow the, the, the wind to pass, but also give you some privacy. So this is an important thing for us that uh, to join like solar protection with intimidity and it's, it's very so always has we, we are worried of allowing the air to pass but not to pass the, the, the views of mm. um, okay this is a one more question from Mitch about Cornea how is the internal courtyard used by the community? Has it been designed with, and then there's a cutoff of this lecture, uh, this question. Uh, yeah, but I think you get a message. So what uh, what is the use of the courtyard and how is it used by the community? Yeah, uh, it, it works very well because you, everybody enters through there. So these are like a common area where they meet. You know, the, the nice thing of Cornelia is that even though they have four stairs, they they think that they all of them they enter to the same gate, so they 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 feel that they belong to the same community. So this is a space that is working because um, they they meet, uh, they have these casual meetings, you know. And but you know we place the vegetation in the middle because of the sound because of the to avoid uh, the sound of, to make some reverberation. So, you know, in the ground floor, there they, they were some stones that absorbed the, the, the reverberation of the sound. You know, there, there was like a gavion. I, I don't, okay, I showed. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, these, these stones, 
-hmm. you know, are in order to absorb the, rever the reverberation, you know, they have some insulation. So we we were worried of the this common area to generate and we go and you know in the middle nobody can place in the middle because it's where the sound will be more uh, in common uh, problems for the neighbors. So this is a common area where they can meet, you know. And also here we can see, you know, you see the these uh, sheets, metal sheets, you no, know, where the air can pass and you have some intimidity. Mm -hmm. So again, you know, this idea of the solar protection with intimidity, yeah. answering that. And are there any amenities uh, at the ground floor? Uh, I, I think I've yeah. read somewhere shops or something that is kind of related yeah. to the city as well as to yeah. the community. So it's a gateway in between the two. You know, uh, all the amenities, you know, that there is until here, we have this facility that has to do with the uh, cinema that is for the, the, the town hall. And here we have these locals that, you know, the, the idea is that all the, the facilities, they are open to the city and, you know, and the, the patio goes up, go, belongs to the neighbors. Okay. All right. Thanks very much. So uh, off to the next question. Thank you for your great presentation. The placement of the toilet is always in the center of the unit and stand along the facade. Does this affect ventilation and what's the rationale behind it? Uh, well, we, we yeah. oh, well, the, the bathroom, they have their own ventilation, the vertical ventilation. So uh, for us, placing it in the middle uh, allow us to do this circulations around, uh, you know, it doesn't consume any facade, you know, because uh, in all our projects, we never, have a lot of facade because it's very expensive to have facade. So they are, all of them, they are deep and narrow. Mm -hmm. So that ends up having the bathroom more in the middle. Okay, right. Uh, so next question from Mark is about, uh, he's also saying, thank you for sharing in detail your amazing work. Uh, if any of these projects was there, uh, and is there any exploration about adaptability? Uh, you mentioned uh, uh, the room idea and how structures being populated by rooms. Yeah, and kind of adaptability is very popular with architects. So maybe a few words on your take uh, uh, on, on, on that. Yeah. For us, the adaptability has more to do, it's not about moving the walls, it has to do to move the users. So I think that we will find out that you know, or all our spaces are bigger than the usual here in Spain because the, normally a room it's around ten square meters, a bigger room, and our rooms are around twelve or thirteen. And for us, this is important for this adaptability. We think that um, the evolution of the uh, of the way we are living it's changing a lot because now uh, the living room. It's not a place, you know, you know, the before in Spain the television was everybody was around television in the living room. But now uh, all the social media, the consumption of social media is very individual. So we, we, we think that the evolution is that the, the living room is more a place to talk with two sofas, one in front of the other, and the television as a common part of the living which is going to disappear. So uh, each one of the, of the rooms has to be a bit bigger because they will, you know, the consumption of these kinds of situations are more particular. And, you know, so uh, we, we think that rooms will be bigger and the common areas of the house will be, will get a bit smaller. That's all, that's how we think so this adaptability has a lot to do with this. We, we, it's, more, it's more about the size. We think the size of the spaces have to be a bit more than the usual ones here. Uh, all right, one final question uh, here, or maybe two. Um, 
uh, incredible work, uh, Paris Torel. Uh, following on from Hella's question, that was the first one. Do you often work with future residents to plan and design common areas? Yeah, yeah, so they're asking whether or not you work with future residents, uh, re residents, I would suppose, that will be people to plan and design communal areas. Yeah, so, yeah. Do okay, you... we think the future is sharing. So, and we, we have uh, some projects that we are now, they're not in construction, but we are the, now working on where this is the key, the, the key point. Uh, the, the key point is that making smaller uh, private spaces and sharing more spaces. So uh, sometimes we think of like uh, having these common kitchens and we, we are working on this and we think this will be the future. This idea of sharing, sharing more spaces, sharing. Uh, sometimes we talk about uh, there's no sense that one have um, a guest rooms in a house because maybe we can have 10 guest rooms in a building and you know for and so it would be better for for all the residents and we would take less space mm -hmm. so see for me for us uh, the common areas the shared spaces are the key point of the evolution of the house yeah uh, yeah, in, in Australia over here in, in, in Melbourne, we there's a model where by architects are working directly with uh, with residents uh, on the design uh, proposal. But in your case, you're working with uh, housing providers, social housing, which are local municipalities uh, in a sense. So it's a slightly different uh, configuration. Yeah. I'm just uh, adding more to uh, to this answer to to uh, Jackie's uh, uh, question. Look, I think we, we have to stop at some point. Um, it's uh, it's uh, 7.30 already uh, over here. Um, I, I want to thank you very much for this amazing and inspiring uh, lecture. We're really happy that you were our guest uh, uh, today. And uh, uh, yes, thank, thank you, you very much. Amazing work. Um, if we can just have an announcement of the, and the following lecture. Um, <laughs> And the screen share, I don't know if technically we'll be able to pull that off. Yes, we are. Uh, Sarah, do you want to do take the honor and uh, uh, introduce the, the next one? The yeah, next no. Um, so in about two weeks, for those of you who enjoyed our talk, we have um, a, a second one as part of the series. Uh, it's going to be presented by Anne Firma from Summa Cum Firma, and it will be looking at essentially the notions of um, home, the fact that even though it gets designed, the design process and the development of it from the architect to the dweller is essentially non finito. Um, so please do come along to that. Uh, the event and the registration, I believe, is up from the MSD website um, events page. So if you go and um, register through that through Eventbrite, you'll be able to receive the Zoom link as, along with the other details. Um, same time, 6 p.m. on the 17th of August. Thanks, Sarah. I think we can conclude uh, uh, here. Thanks, everyone.